Good morning. Thank you all for uh, joining me this morning and as well thank you in particular to uh, University of Alberta President uh, Bill Flanagan, Red Deer Student Association uh, President Brittany Lawson, Adam Legg with the Business Council of Alberta and uh, Michael Frankie from Olds College for being here today. Global trends are reshaping post-secondary education and the skills our students need for success. Rapid technological change is poised to disrupt the labor market as a wide majority of Albertans, or uh, many Albertans, excuse me, currently work in careers that may face disruption due to automation and technological advancements. Furthermore, we are also experiencing a growing shortage of skilled trades professionals, which also threatens to create workforce shortages in key sectors of our economy. As well, the skills demands of employers are rapidly changing as more seek employees with digital, critical thinking, communication, social, and collaboration skills. We must do everything possible to ensure post-secondary graduates and other adult learners are equipped with the skills for jobs. The COVID-19 pandemic has accelerated many of these changes, bringing even greater importance to ensuring our citizens are prepared for a changing world of work. As Alberta's government moves forward with an ambitious strategy to create jobs and build and diversify our economy, it's essential that we build a highly skilled and competitive workforce, strengthen innovation, improve commercialization of research, and forge stronger relationships between employers and post-secondary institution. Rapid change requires us all to work together to support, uh, to support Alberta's uh, aspirations to be resilient and future ready for success in the 21st century and beyond. This is more than a challenge. It's a remarkable opportunity to respond by further strengthening our world-class post-secondary system that will inspire and equip Albertans with the skills, knowledge, and competencies they need to succeed. Our system will be highly responsive to labor market needs, allowing our program services and policies to keep pace with the changing needs of industry and economy. Through innovative programming and excellence in research, we will contribute to the betterment of a prosperous Alberta. A place that draws and nurtures talent, a place of opportunity where people and businesses stay and grow. Building this kind of post-secondary system for Alberta starts with a vision and a plan. And I'm exceptionally proud and excited to present today, Alberta 2030 building skills for jobs, a 10-year strategy for advanced education in our province. This Made in Alberta strategy is the result of Alberta's first comprehensive post-secondary review in 15 years. It is based on comprehensive engagement, evidence-informed analysis, best practices from other jurisdictions, and recognizing Alberta's unique context. It is vital that the strategy have support of stakeholders and a shared commitment to take action for a prosperous future. Alberta 2030 is founded on broad and meaningful engagement with Alberta's post-secondary institution leaders, students, faculty, staff, industry and employers, other experts in higher education, and community members and Albertans at large. Thousands of Albertans participated through online surveys, workbooks, telephone town halls, roundtable discussions, in-person meetings, one-on-one -on -one interviews, and direct submissions. This is the start of working differently as an ecosystem. And this strategy is just the first step on the journey. As we carry this forward momentum into the next stages of implementation, I know that the exciting work of transforming our post-secondary system for a 21st century global economy is underway and will continue over the months and years ahead. The strategy begins by establishing a clear vision for post-secondary education. And to achieve this vision, Alberta 2030 has also identified six broad goals to guide future post-secondary action. Each goal is supplemented by 
specific objectives, which are also supported by detailed initiatives. The six goals are identified as follows. Firstly, improve access and strengthen the student experience. Secondly, develop skills for jobs. Thirdly, support innovation and commercialization. Fourthly, strengthen internationalization. Fifth, improve sustainability and affordability. And lastly, strengthen system governance. Let me tell you a little bit more about each one of these goals. Under goal one, improve access and the student experience, we will focus on improving the transfer system so that students are not repeating courses. We will prioritize the expansion of digital infrastructure and distance education to help reach more students where they are. We'll also develop targeted strategies to strengthen the inclusion of Indigenous learners, improve support for foundational learning, and create stronger pathways for those learners. And finally as well, support the expansion of open educational resources. Under goal two, develop skills for jobs, Alberta 2030 will focus on making Alberta the first province in Canada to offer every undergraduate student a work integrated learning opportunity. We will focus as well on creating new apprenticeships, streamline the program approval process, develop a provincial framework to guide micro credentials and strengthen the role of post-secondary institutions in the reskilling and upskilling of our workforce. Under goal three, support innovation and commercialization, Alberta 2030 will focus on creating centralized first-rate resources to expand commercialization and entrepreneurship capabilities system-wide. We'll also develop an intellectual property framework for Alberta that will incentivize faculty to pursue entrepreneurial activities. And we'll bring post-secondary institutions together with investors and the private sector to advance cutting edge research and innovation. Under goal four, strengthening internationalization. Alberta 2030 will focus on developing an education in Alberta brand with promotional material to demonstrate the top reasons to study in Alberta. We will also increase visibility of Alberta's international education offerings and also implement an international marketing strategy that will include Team Alberta missions to priority regions. Under goal five, improving financial sustainability and affordability, Alberta 2030 will achieve this by maintaining a cap on tuition increases support academic and non-academic shared services to get value for money, and increase need-based financial aid, and finally, deconsolidate large, uh, uh, largest post-secondary institutions to give them more freedom and autonomy. Lastly, under goal six, strengthen system governance, Alberta 2030 will make a series of amendments to the Post-Secondary Learning Act that will achieve the following. Firstly, we will create a new Higher Education and Skills Council to guide system-wide collaboration, learn from best practices around the world, and provide ongoing strategic advice to the Minister and work to implement Alberta 2030. We will also change the current six-sector model into two, one for our universities and one for colleges and polytechnics. Each sector will have a coordinating committee that will work to reduce unnecessary duplication, share best practices, and achieve common goals. To move forward, the Ministry of Advanced Education is already undertaking work to prioritize which projects should proceed first and which ones require some more development. We will be moving forward immediately on strengthening work-integrated learning, deconsolidating our largest institutions, expanding reskilling and upskilling opportunities, and creating new apprenticeships with more initiatives to be rolled out in the coming weeks and months. Over the spring and summer, we will also continue to engage with students, faculty, and staff to build the upcoming legislative amendments together. In closing, I would like to thank 
in particular the members of the Guiding Coalition for their extensive involvement. As well, I want to thank and acknowledge the hardworking staff and team at Advanced Education and all Albertans who helped contribute to this process. This strategy sets some key goals and ambitious plans for our system, but I am confident we will achieve them. Our post-secondary system is critical to the long-term success and vitality of our province. As well, I'm also happy to have the support of post-secondary institutions, employers, industry organizations, and most importantly of all, so many of our students. I'm proud of what we have built together, and I firmly believe we will give our students and our institutions the tools they need to succeed. I would now like to invite University of Alberta President Bill Flanagan to say a few words. Thank you, Minister Nicolaitis. I am delighted to join you today for the launch of the Alberta 2030 strategy. And first, I would like to commend you and offer my warmest congratulations on the release of Alberta 2030. I know that you have worked tirelessly to make this day possible with many consultations with all interested stakeholders. And today marks a new important strategic direction for all post-secondary institutions in Alberta. And I know that all of us in the sector look forward to continuing to work with you and to achieve the ambitious goals set out in Alberta 2030. And I would like to highlight four areas in this Alberta 2030 strategy. First, there is very good news for all of our students. The plan to increase student aid will ensure that post-secondary education is, is accessible to a diverse array of our students. Uh, we also applaud the government's ambitious plan to offer work integrated learning to every post-secondary student in Alberta. To be globally competitive, students need to learn and apply skills and build professional networks as early as possible in their education. I'm proud to report that the University of Alberta already offers work integrated learning opportunities to more than 80% of our current students. And we look forward to working with you to expand this vital program. A second, a deconsolidation of the University of Alberta's books from the public accounts of the province is a major step forward. This change will place Alberta's three research intensive universities on a level playing field with their national peers. And deconsolidation will unleash the full potential of the University of Alberta to operate as an engine of economic growth for the entire province. It will allow us to be more to more effectively plan for our future to generate new sources of revenue and enable us to be a full partner with the province in building future prosperity. And third, Alberta 2030 inc increased focus on innovation and commercialization promises to drive greater economic and social growth to the benefit of all Albertans. For more than 100 years, the University of Alberta has led some of the most important innovations in Alberta and beyond. We are eager to work with the province to find the very best model for transforming research discoveries into tangible products, processes, and policies that will continue to improve lives and build stronger economies. And finally, I am delighted to see the focus in Alberta 2030 on attracting more talented international students to Alberta. More than 20% of the University of Alberta students come from more than 160 countries from around the world. Almost half of our international graduate students become citizens or permanent residents, bringing highly skilled people into our workforce, contributing to a growing and thriving future for Alberta. So once again, congratulations, Minister. The University of Alberta looks forward to working closely with the government of Alberta to achieve the ambitious goals set out in Alberta 2030. And I would now like to invite Adam Legg of the Business Council of Alberta to offer some remarks. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, Bill, and thank you, Minister, for inviting me to participate in this exciting announcement. Uh, I was privileged to serve on the Guiding Coalition uh, for 2030 and believe that uh, we have such an incredible strategy that you've developed. So congratulations to you and to the entire advanced education uh, team. The business community looks forward to working with you as you move toward implementation. Uh, I believe the strategy is built in such a way as to improve the post-secondary outcomes for Albertans and students the institutions themselves, and for Alberta employers. The Business Council of Alberta has done extensive work on the future of skills and training amongst our members and with Alberta institutions. The themes and directions embedded within Alberta 2030 are squarely in line with what we found as a Business Council, and that is where the needs of employers converge with the delivery of post-secondary education in Alberta. 
the area of preparing students for future work, a strong emphasis learning such as co-ops, apprenticeships, and employer-sponsored projects features prominently in the strategy and will enable Alberta post-secondary graduates to be far better prepared for their careers and more employable after graduation. In terms of the right skills for the future, the strategy includes a greater emphasis on engagement and connections with the employer community to develop the right programs needed for today and tomorrow. It focuses on commercialization of the important research happening at Alberta post-secondaries so that we can drive the future companies and jobs of tomorrow. As Alberta's economy and work opportunities evolve, ensuring all Albertans can continue their lifelong journey is important, and Alberta 2030 ensures that students will be able to transfer more seamlessly across institutions, achieve micro-credentials for new and evolving skills within occupations. Finally, it's great to see that Alberta 2030 reflects the need to continually evolve our skills to meet the changing realities of Alberta's economy. Whether one is just graduating high school or needing to make a career change, Albertans from every corner and every age have opportunity to pursue higher education through Alberta 2030. Overall, Alberta's employers welcome the Alberta 2030 strategy for generate graduates who are more confident, prepared, and skilled for the role of the ones that they're transitioning into. It will create a strong workforce for the future, which is the most important pillar of a thriving economy. So once again, I congratulate you, Minister Nicolaides, and the Government of Alberta on the launch of the Alberta 23 strategy, 2030 strategy, and for the difference that I know it will make to Alberta's competitiveness and prosperity. It's now my pleasure to introduce Brittany Lawson, Chair of the Alberta Students Executive Council and President of the Students Association of Red Deer College. Thank you, Adam. Uh, for the past year, student leaders around the province have been engaged in a variety of consultations surrounding what the future of post-secondary should look like. Alberta 2030 responds to many of the concerns that students have had for post-secondary throughout the years. Acceptability and predictability were, a major, were major issues students wanted to address, and we are encouraged that the review has called for predictable tuition with reasonable increases and following the 2022 academic year, the minister has committed to keeping these increases tied to inflation. For many years, students have struggled to transfer from institution to institution, which costs students and taxpayers money. With the promise to overhaul the current transfer system, this gives students the flexibility they need to learn from any institution in the province of Alberta. Lastly, as costs continue to rise for students, the additional commitment to student aid will also allow students to access post-secondary in a more affordable manner. There is still much work to be done, but students are committed to working with government to ensure that student needs are the main priority with this exciting system review. Now I'll pass this on to my colleague, a director at the uh, Alberta Students Executive Council, Michael Frankel. Thank you very much, Brittany. Um, as a director for the Alberta Students Executive Council and as a student at Olds College, I'm glad to see the initiatives that the Government of Alberta is undertaking to make our students more employable. We at ASEC have been advocating for more experiential learning through work integrated learning and micro-credentialing models. We're happy to see that through the months of stakeholder consultations, the Government of Alberta has listened to their key stakeholder, the students and has acted on our recommendation to increase work integrated learning opportunities and enable micro-credentialing programs for future students. Work integrated learning and micro-credentialing will allow for post-secondaries to become more accessible and relevant for people looking to further their education, upgrade or upskill. These improvements will be crucial parts in getting our skilled and trained students into the workforce. These programs will allow students to build industry connections, as well as giving them more hands-on practical knowledge of their program. This will modernize the Alberta post-secondary system, and this is how we will get our students back to work. Thank you. Uh, and now I'll hand it back to Minister Nicolaides at the podium. Michael, thank you so much. And as well, um, Brittany, Adam, and, and President Flanagan, thank you incredibly for your participation this morning and for your uh, comments. Uh, once again, 
uh, it's a real pleasure to be able to be here to present Alberta 2030. Uh, of course, uh, there's many ambitious elements here that will require additional time and, and focus to develop, but I am absolutely confident that together, as an integrated post-secondary system, we can achieve these incredible results. Uh, and with that, I'm happy to take uh, any questions. Thank you, everyone. We'll now open the line to questions. We have time for two questions each, or one, and a follow-up. Operator, please put through the first caller. Kevin Nimick, CTV. Sorry, Kevin, are you there? Are you unmuted? Hi there. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Uh, Minister, I was wondering about pl plans for diversification. Uh, I mean, as you know, jobs are changing, and it seems like we're working on uh, solutions for preparing workers for uh, the work sites of tomorrow, not the work sites of today. What are you seeing in terms of the internship opportunities available to Calgary and area students right now? Well, I think there's, um, there's, I think, perhaps more limited opportunities today than, than we have in the past. Uh, of course, uh, as we all face challenging economic times, it, it does make it difficult for, for employers to continue to provide internship opportunities. Uh, and I think that that's why it's important within the Alberta 2030 strategy that we set some very ambitious goals and targets around work integrated learning. There's a lot more we need to do in this regard to help support students, employers, and post-secondary institutions. I think we all need to be at the table uh, discussing creative solutions to create more internships. Um, you know, what I, I, in many of my conversations uh, with, with business leaders, I, I've heard a variety of, of different examples of where things need to change. For example, uh, in, a, in a recent co uh, conversation with a larger employer in the province, uh, there was note that a lot, some of our internship um, opportunities may be too rigid and that uh, there, we may need to look at more flexible project-based internships uh, and that um, employers are looking for that kind of flexibility. I've also heard from small and medium-sized businesses that we need to look at the development of uh, more uh, centralized or coordinated approaches to make work integrated learning opportunities um, available. You know, there, there's no 1-800 uh, uh, hire an intern hotline that employers can call and, uh, and find an intern who's willing to participate in, in their project or within their organization. So I think there's more that we need to do to make those connections between our institutions and employers. Do you have a follow-up? Operator, please put through the next caller. Mr. Could you be specific about uh, what you um, mean by TAP uh, on tuition and how would that be applied? Is it going to be government mandated? Uh, and secondly, could you also explain more about uh, deconsolidation of the universities? I take it this is a partly a fiscal thing, but didn't quite grasp the detail of it. Uh, sure. So. Um, uh, Apologies, I don't know if I heard the entire part of your question with respect to the cap, but um, there, there's currently a cap on tuition in place um, now, and I think it's, uh, you know, through the work that we've done through Alberta 2030 and, and listening to students that uh, we recognize the importance for there to continue to, uh, to be a cap in place, uh, which is uh, why there, uh, there will continue to be a, a cap in place. During, during the Alberta 2030 analysis, there was... Uh, a lot of varied discussion about tuition policy and, and looking at other jurisdictions. Uh, there's, there's a lot of variance within Canada and around the world. Uh, some jurisdictions don't regulate tuition, others do, uh, and, and in different models, uh, in different vehicles. I, I think, if memory serves me correct, I believe in Saskatchewan, it's, it's more of a negotiated um, type of increase where an institution will 
um, make a request to government about what what they're looking to to do with respect to tuition and then uh, receive approval. So, so there are very different models, and we took a close look at that. And um, I think, as we heard earlier from from Michael and, and Brittany as well, I think the importance of having some predictability is critical, and I think a cap helps maintain that. With respect to, uh, if I didn't answer your question there, uh, please follow up. But with respect to deconsolidation, um, it's it's partly a financial matter. So, the, the government of Alberta appoints the the board chair and a majority of board members to our post-secondary institutions, and also has uh, many other instruments of control and oversight. There's extensive reporting requirements. Our institutions are required to submit you know, in institutional plans, annual reports, other reports, and things of that nature. Um, other uh, commercial uh, activity, whether that's entering into new leases, oftentimes requires government approval. So uh, deconsolidation uh, is, is a, a large red tape reduction exercise and would involve the elimination or relaxation of a lot of these control measures to um, give institutions more flexibility to, uh, to engage uh, in a more autonomous way in, in different activities. This, many universities uh, around Canada, uh, the larger universities operate this way. And, uh, and so we've, we've taken a very close look at that. And, and perhaps I'm not sure if President Flanagan would like to add anything in that regard as well. Uh, yes, thank you, Minister. Yeah, deconsolidation for the large research intensive universities will really untie our hands. And as the minister said, this is a very important red tape reduction. And I know the government is very committed to doing that. It will allow us to be much more innovative and entrepreneurial in terms of driving new revenue growth for the university, which of course we can invest in our teaching and research, research mission. So this is, an, this is an enormously important step. And I just once again want to, to thank the minister for, for taking a very bold move in Alberta 2032, move us in this direction. And as the minister said, we'll place us on a level playing field with the very best universities in Canada. Thank you. Operator, please put through the next caller. Our next question comes from Catherine Grigowski, Alberta Today. Uh, yeah, so I guess the first question um, would be a follow-up to Don Braid on the tuition cap. Has any uh, limit, any hard number actually been set for that tuition cap? And how does it differ for international students versus domestic students? Uh, yes, so in... Um in 2019, we made amendments uh, to the Post-Secondary Learning Act. Um, uh, prior to that, the tuition cap was set at um, an inflationary index, at, at CPI. Uh, and uh, subs, uh, we, amendments we made to the Post-Secondary Learning Act allowed for three years of 7% increases. Uh, and after those three years of 7% increases, uh, the uh, cap on CPI would, would come back into force. Uh, so it, it's it's um, as a as it's tied to CPI, it's a fluctuating measure, uh, but uh, I think we can make some broad assumptions about you know in, inflationary levels uh, and and how those move. Uh, apologies, I think you had um, a second question or a second part to your question. Uh, yes. Um, well, I do have a follow up. Um, what would you say to the criticism that um, this is a focus purely on? the jobs outcomes of university, and it doesn't see at, uh, the benefit of education for education's sake. Well, I would, I would say a couple of things to that. Um, uh, one, of, one of the key goals in the plan is to strengthen uh, research, innovation, uh, and, and commercialization. Uh, now, it's not to say that all research can and should be commercialized, but we should expand those opportunities. Uh, but furthermore, recognizes the important role that uh, research uh, contributions make to our society. Uh, and uh, uh, I know we recently supported that work, uh, for example, at the University of Alberta with uh, 20 million over four years to the Li Kaixing um, Applied Virology Institute. Uh, and as well, uh, I, I would encourage uh, you know some of those um, individuals who provide those comments to to look at uh, a lot of student surveys. Um, I, I don't have the, the report in front of me at the moment, but uh, 
many student surveys, or many uh, surveys, excuse me, that uh, explore student motivation and understanding as to why they're enrolling in post-secondary education, uh, why they chose the program that they chose, is in the vast majority, of over 60% of circumstances, tied to career-oriented outcomes. Either they, they're picking a particular program because they want to pursue a career in that program, uh, or because they want to expand their career horizons. Uh, so that's, that's the motivation um, as, as demonstrated uh, through surveys of students. Thank you. Operator, please put through the next caller. Don Braid, Calgary Herald. Yes, thanks for taking another question. Um, I'm a little surprised that you don't have any representation there from faculty. Uh, you've got good representation from students, obviously, and that's good, but uh, where, where are the people who are actually going to be doing the teaching? Well, we've, uh, we, we've engaged uh, extensively, um, I think, as you heard the, this morning, with students, uh, Albertans, employers, university uh, leadership, and uh, faculty as well. And uh, many of their um, uh, concerns, we've tried, of course, to ensure that their priorities are, are reflected um, in the strategy as well. Uh, we've had uh, faculty members be key representatives on the guiding coalition that really helped to move the entire effort forward. And I uh, continue to have uh, very detailed conversations with uh, our faculty representatives. Um, uh, and I believe there's, there's excitement about how we can move this initiative forward. Do you have a follow-up, Don? That's good. Thanks. We have no more callers on the line, so that concludes today's Thank you, everyone.